So we're back with Brenda almost. Brenda was on an episode previously of the What's Up Next podcast. We now know it's called the Earn and Invest podcast. And Brenda and I were lucky enough to catch up this weekend at the Economy Conference in Cincinnati. Brenda, when did you buy your tickets originally? Was it months ago? It was months ago. It was back in the fall. I think I first saw it posted on Instagram and then... I heard people talking about it on Twitter and there were early bird tickets. So always one to save a buck. I bought the early bird ticket. (laughs) And this is not close for you. What drove you to decide to come to economy? Well, I'd never been to Cincinnati and I always like to have a good excuse to go to a new place. I figured that a lot of the people that I knew from Twitter and from other social media places were going to be there. And so I wanted to meet them in person. Are you a big conference goer? I'm not, actually. Well, I guess I started this year after I went to Camp FI, and I was really encouraged, and I really liked it. And so I thought this would be another way to meet people who are on the same path. Did you find this to be a very different experience than Camp FI? Camp FI is a little bit more of a small setting. You have 50 or 60 people. Did this feel very different? Yes, it was very different. There were a, there were a couple hundred people, I think, and there wasn't as much one-on-one time with people, but I still got to have quality time with the people that I wanted to meet in person. And it was good to see a big group like that because sometimes you think, oh, it's just this very small niche of people. And to see a couple hundred was encouraging. In a lot of ways, economy somewhat reminded me of a TED conference. Yeah. The speakers were maybe shorter, 20 to 30 minutes. And as opposed to the kind of didactic that you get in some types of conferences, this was a lot more lectures and talks. Uh, Did you like that format? I did. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be a little bit more interactive, but I did like that they were short and sweet. It never felt like a lecture. And I felt like the speakers got their point across pretty quickly and you knew what they were going to be about. But the format was good for a one-day presentation. I actually heard a couple people say, like, I'm glad it was just one day because if it's more than one day, I just kind of zone out or, like, it's too much information overload. And there were some breakout group sessions. Did you go to one of the groups in the middle of the day? I think there was a two-hour period where various sessions were open, which is a little bit more of a group's discussion format. Right, and maybe that's why I felt that there wasn't that aspect because I actually went to the Playing With Fire documentary showing because I hadn't seen it yet. Uh, What did you think? I liked it. I liked it. It was a practical application of the fire movement in a couple that is kind of like the stereotypical American couple with all the stuff and all the money and yet no time. <laughs> Speaking of prototypical couple, one of the things that amazed me about the Economy Conference is the speakers and a lot of the participants were not your typical Caucasian male engineer, financial independence and personal finance stereotypes. There really were a lot of different types of people there. That's true. I appreciated that very much because I'm a Latina and I don't meet a lot of other Latinas in the fire movement. And so it was encouraging to see uh, Natalie Torres Haddad and Jackie, both who are Latinas and African American. And so it was nice to feel some representation. I think Diana Miriam was very thoughtful about what types of speakers she had uh, because Mm -hmm. she really felt like the financial independence movement was a very varied and diverse movement. And sometimes it's hard to see that. I've become more and more aware of that as I'm podcasting, that if you open up your lens of focus a little bit, you see that there really are almost every sort of person out there who's interested in managing their money better and finding some sense of freedom away from personal finances. So I thought she did a really good job of capturing that. Was there anything specifically that surprised you about the conference? The diversity, uh, how many people showed up? Uh, I was impressed by the turnout. Yeah, it was bigger than you would have thought, right? Yeah, and it was actually, like, she went a lot bigger than I thought she would. The venue was really big. It was really well decorated. There was a lot of stuff with the Economy logo, down to the little footprint stickers, and just, like, a lot of attention to detail that 
had I started my own conference like the first year, I probably wouldn't have gone in that direction, but it was just so thoughtful and it went a long way. I think, you know, even like the after party, she just did such a good job with the venue and the band and just creating a good ambiance for people to talk. And it's so nice to be able to be around people who are open about finances. (laughs) It was like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. People who aren't there would be surprised at how professional it was. It was a beautiful stage. She had Mm -hmm. her own lighting people. She had a stage manager. She had a DJ, kind of an insider view. We as the speakers came the day before and did a five and a half hour rehearsal. And we didn't even go through our talks. The rehearsal was all about transitions to make sure that the music was right, that the microphones were right that all of the pieces were in place, it was fairly exhaustive. You wouldn't have known that as an attendee, but as one of the speakers, I will tell you that there was an incredibly large amount of thought that went into making it look and feel seamless. So this was not your hastily thrown together production. This was a well orchestrated event and from the inside, it certainly felt like that. And I bet from the audience too, it, things probably felt like they really went together well. They did, yeah. Anything specifically you learned from the speakers that you're taking home with you? Anything that really stuck in your mind? I don't have student loans, but I liked seeing the student loan planner presentation just because I can at least offer that link to people that I know that have student loans and having a master's degree. I know lots of people that have student loans. <laughs> I really liked Jackie's presentation and how she didn't really come across the fire movement until late in her 30s and yet still graduated, still fired, you know, still became financially independent at 47 and then retired at 49, which is like super encouraging because I'm start I started at 27, you know, and I'm like and sometimes I feel like 45 is far away, but I'm like wow, she did it in like 10 years or less. That's incredible, you know, and she wasn't making six figures. So that was awesome. And then it was really great to meet Julian and Kirsten Saunders. I got to talk to them a little bit. We got to talk about, you know, minorities in the fire movement and how a lot of us, we didn't grow up with these principles. And so we're learning them in our adulthood. And we're not just learning personal finance, but we're going a little bit further and pursuing fire. And I was really impressed by Julian's desire to see more Black millionaires. So to go through some of the things you said, so for the student loans, that was Travis Hornsby. And if any of you guys know him, sometimes he seems quiet and mild-mannered when you see him out socially. But when he gets up to give a talk, he is just out there and exuberant and excited by the conversation. And so he was a lot of fun and he was incredibly funny, but he also presented rapid fire, a huge amount of great information about the numbers behind student loans. In fact, you know, he went as far as saying that, you know, you either pay off your student loans as fast as you're possible or you don't, but there's no in between. And he went through all the math and why that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I pretty much enjoyed everyone's talk. It was great hanging out with Julian and Kirsten. I am not big on the minimalist movement, but Rose Lounsbury was there too. Mm -hmm. And she was really enlightening on the minimalism movement and how it plays a role. And there's a natural fit with financial independence and minimalism. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see her at the event. She gave a fantastic talk, as did everyone else. I really enjoyed Jackie's talk. She brought her daughter along too. So if you know some of Jackie's content, she talks a lot about teaching her daughter and the letter she wrote to her daughter. And so to see her daughter there as she was up on stage giving this talk uh, was just a really proud moment, at least for me watching on. And I will definitely remember those things from the Economy Conference. So wrap it up for us. If someone's thinking about going next year, because Diana has said there's going to be one next year, what would you tell them? I would tell them, absolutely go. (laughs) Rack up your points right now (laughs) so you can get your flight there. Uh, There's a travel hacking break-off session. So if you want to learn about that, that'll be there. And there's nothing like being around people who are like-minded, especially on a path that to the average person seems really difficult. You really find your people and you find some 
motivation. Like even for me, I felt like the last few months, I just kind of wanted to spend more, wanted to treat myself, you know, and I got there and I was like, I don't need that. Like the things that make me happy are not stuff. Like, even like you said, I'm not really into minimalism either, but just that conversation about like, what's enough, you know, and do I ever stop and think, do I have enough? Is this enough? Am I enough? Uh, or am I just buying things because I feel like I'm not enough until I have those things? And then that just deters my plan, right? So it was a nice wake up call and a great opportunity to meet people that I interact with a lot online. So I would definitely recommend going. Conferences like this are a great reminder because out in the rest of the world, maybe we're looking at blogs and listening to podcasts, but we're not talking or thinking about these things all the time. And it's really easy to start cutting corners and to start doing all the things that you told yourself you didn't want to do, but you get tired and you get busy and you stop thinking about it. So if you go to a conference like this once a year, once every six months, it's that reminder and it sticks with you. And I think a lot of us benefit from having those occasional reminders getting us back on the wagon, so to speak, if that's the correct term, you know, getting us engaged and back into what we believe in. So tell us where can we find you and what's up next in your life? I am on Twitter as Almost Brenda. That's A-L-M-O-S-T Brenda. And I am figuring out what my financial plan looks like as I start a PhD in the fall. So I'm crunching numbers and figuring out what my priorities are going to be in the next three to four years. Well, congratulations on the PhD program. I hope to catch up with you at another conference meetup or get together in the near future. And thanks for coming on to talk about the Economy Conference. No problem. Thank you.